In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new product from Dieto. Now, this is another Mamba model here, and it's pretty interesting because it has some really nice features. And that's what we're going to cover today. So everything is linked down below. Also, the timestamps are down below. So you can go ahead and skip to whatever part of the video you'd like. We're going to do an advanced breakdown of the components and also the beginner setup guide if you didn't know what to do here. So this one right here is the Mamba F405 DJI mini stack. And as you can tell, I got a little bit dirty or that was a sticker or something. But this thing is a 20 by 20 stack, which has a 6S capable ESC up to 35 amps and 45 uh, burst here, as they're stating. And it's an F405 microcontroller unit with MPU 6000 drive no flash memory and it has a 9 volt regulator which is going to be really great here so let's take a look at some of the accessories here so first of all we'll start with a goodie bag here they give you some sort of a carbon fiber uh separator here if you ever needed that and they give you really long metal two millimeter screws with some uh two millimeter rubber grommets here which is really nice to see here and it has some pre-installed inside let's go ahead and zoom in here now they do provide us with a low ESR capacitor, which is always really great here, especially uh, if you're going to be setting on anything, actually. It's really good to have these. I think these are Panasonic right here. So these seem to be the proper ones. 470, 35 volts, which is going to handle just about anything here. They give us the XT60 also with the cover. You could actually pop this off. Uh, we'll do that later. Now, another thing that I really liked and what kind of actually held my HD build up was because I lost the connector for the DJI setup here. Now, this actually provides you with that. So all you have to do is just plug that here and plug this side into your flight controller and you're going to be good to go. Now, they also do provide us with some power cables, which are pretty short, uh, maybe a bit too short. These are 16 gauge. Well, I would like to see them a bit bigger. But it's okay here. Hopefully you'll have your own there. They give us a spare connector that's going to connect the ESC to the flight controller. This is a slightly longer one, just in case you kind of uh, had a double stacking solution. For example, if you wanted to do uh, the flight controller back here, the ESC here, you can do something like that. And that's why they provide that extra for you, which is really nice of Diatone, actually. So they do provide you with an extra one here. And we also have more rubber grommets that go into the flight controller and or ESC or actually just the flight controller. Uh, these are going to be different thick uh, firmness. So these are different than these. I don't know which one's softer. We'll figure that out on the build video here. And last but not least, we do get the flight controller and the ESC, which we're going to take a closer look at in the advanced breakdown in a bit here and also help you with the connection setup guide towards the end of the video. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the next step and we'll take it from there. So now we're going to be doing the advanced breakdown of the flight controller here. Now, it's a pretty interesting flight controller due to a couple reasons. One, it's a 20 by 20. And not only that, it has a 9 volt regulator, takes up to 6S input, which is really great, obviously. And you need that in order to power that 9 volt regulator. And at the same time, it has the connector for the DJI stuff. So right there. And they even provide you with the connector. And they kept the on-screen display, which is really good. And I like seeing that. Because if you don't want to go the DJI route, then you can go the analog route and take full advantage of the 9-volt regulator, which is always really, really good. And um, Mamba did a pretty damn good job on this, in my opinion, right now. So we do have the OSD, like I mentioned. We're using the MPU 6000 gyro. It's rocking an F405 here. Here we have one voltage regulator circuit. It could be, I don't know, we'll just say 5 volts right now. And this is the other one, which is probably like 9 volts here. So it could be vice versa. I don't know, I didn't test these. And here we have these two little shot key diodes, one on this side, one on that side of the flight controller. And maybe I should right here, this is the bottom side. So bottom, and then here we'll call this the top side. So theoretically, let's pretend this is the 5 volt regulator now and let's pretend this is the correct shot key diode. So for example, this one is getting piped 5 volts to this leg and the 5 volts from the USB is getting piped to that leg and then that gives the 5 volt to the overall system. And for example, if you someday plug in the USB, it's getting power and when you plug in the battery, it's not getting power. It's either this one or this one. It'll be one of those. I have a video on testing those. And here we have a nice little 3 volt regulator, 3.3 volt regulator to be exact because those power up the microcontroller unit. It also powers up the uh, gyro here and the OSD since this is the AT. This takes 3.3 volts. The maximum is the one that takes 5 volts. And obviously we have our USB connector here. And overall, it's a really nice design, especially I really like these uh, status LEDs right here. So if something is wrong, it won't power up. The first two are basically for the, uh, you know, the boot sequence of the microcontroller. You know, if something's wrong, you probably know that from here. And these are for the regulators. If the 9 volts not working, it won't boot. 
or the LED won't turn on, the 5 volt, 3.3, and a VCC. So if you have something, you know, a problem coming in from the flight controller, then you'll know it's the VCC not powering on. And uh, yeah, if the VCC is not powering on, nothing will power on, basically, if you don't have the USB connected, especially the 9 volt and the 5 uh, The 9 volt won't power on, basically. Now, in overall design, it seems pretty good. It seems like any other flight controller, since they all pretty much share the same schematics, since they're all using the same microcontrol units. Uh, I wish to see, I, I would have wished if it was an F7, but at the currently it doesn't really matter that much anyways and um overall it just looks like a nice little beast and it's going to be i think tomorrow's build so we'll probably see that tomorrow after tomorrow or the day after that uh depending on when i get time to actually build it and um and let's go ahead and jump into the esc breakdown all right so we're gonna go ahead and cover the esc breakdown now the connection setup will be towards the end of the video here so first of all this is a bl heli s esc so if you didn't know that no, now you don't it's a bl heli s not 32 so we have d shot 600 as the maximum here and it takes 3 to 6 as input so all that's good 35 amps and i think a 45 amp burst which i doubt but we'll just say it because that's what the paper said for right now so for the fets here they're using uh, the mid-sized ones not the biggest but it should get the job done okay for a non-high load quadcopter so if you're going cinematography with you know, you're not going to be going super fast full throttle most of the time. This will do just fine. However, if you build this and you do not install the low ESR capacitor, as you can tell, they have the holes for you right there. There you go. And they even provide it in the package. It was, I think, a 340 or a 470. I think it was a 470. I think it was a 470 microfarad rated at 35 volts. Uh, you definitely want to add that 100% or you will fry this. So keep that in mind because this is the filtration you got right there. That's it. So make sure you add that low ESR capacitor. It's a must here. And um, it should do the job just fine for just, you know, pretty basic setup, you know, like 2300 KV, 2400 KV, even 6S, you'll be fine unless you're building some sort of a uh, high-end beast who's going to be pulling a lot of amperage, then I wouldn't recommend this one. But for a nice little DJI cinematic setup freestyle, yeah, I think it'll be totally fine, which is what I'm going to be setting it up on. Now for the mic control units here, we're using the BB2 chips. You could read that BB2. Maybe you could read that, but it says BB2 right there. So this is a BB2 chip again, just because it's BL Heli S, so D shot 600 maximum. And here we have obviously the FETs, as you can tell. Uh, I really love the the sizing and also the spacing of the motor outputs here or the motor pads here. Really great, and we can see the vias going in through that allow more current to pass through. Again, really nice to see here. Filtration, I wish I would have seen more. I've seen more on ones that were more full than this, so I wish they would have utilized the space a bit better here, in my opinion. Now, also a nice little characteristic here is we have the connector, so you could use the connector right here, and you also have the pads on the other side, So you and, and they're very well labeled, so you're not going to, or you have a really hard time screwing that up if you do end up screwing that up. Uh, in terms of, oh, we have more capacitors right here. I missed those. That's kind of nice here. So we got two here, and then we got another well, a total of six in here for the regulator, more likely. And right here down the middle, we have the 3.3 volt regulator here. Now, I wouldn't recommend this ESC for a super heavy load application, something that pulls a lot of amperage, basically, or watts. And uh, just if you didn't know, the way to set this up would be this side would be up here because you could read motor one, motor two, motor three. And motor four this would be the top side and the connector would be the bottom side and the batteries should be in the back here so just in case you didn't know that and again we'll cover that towards the end of the video and we have a positive and negative here and um that's really it for the esc it looks okay i wouldn't stick it on a super you know power hungry build i'll probably go with like a budget build on this and that's what i'm doing uh with this uh setup right here or the stack and uh we should see how well it's going to perform i believe it's going to perform pretty good but again very important add the low ESR capacitor or you'll have a nightmare and let's go ahead and jump to the next step all right guys so in this part of the video i'm going to be showing you how to connect your fpv camera if you don't know how so let's go ahead and get started here now for every camera there's three main wires five volt ground and the camera signal which is the video feed and i'll explain why we set the video feed into the flight controller so first of all let's go ahead and start with the five volt which is going to be this one right here and this is where they really want you to actually set everything up here so that's going to be five volts right there the next one down the line is going to be ground i'm going to use the color white usually it's the black wire but just to make things a little bit easier obviously we can't use black because it's uh the the background color here so this would be ground so let's go ahead and write ground sorry about that and then the last one is going to be the video. And I'll explain why the video goes into the flight controller right now, if you did not know why. So here's the video signal. As it's going in, it goes to here, and then it goes through the board. It goes to this chip right here, 
and it does the on-screen display where it puts the information like your battery voltage, how long you've been flying, your GPS location, or it points to where your home is if you had a GPS on. So this is the reason why we put our camera into our flight controllers. And then this process that information, outputs it down to the uh, video transmitter. Now, if you're running the DJI, it does that automatically through here, so you don't even need to worry about that. But again, what's really nice about this is I'm showing you the analog because there's no need to show you the DJI because you just use this connector right here and uh, you're basically done with that, which is really nice. So that's it for the FPV camera. Let's go ahead and jump into the video transmitter part. So in this part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at the video transmitter setup if you're not running an HD setup like the DJI setup. Now, before connecting your video transmitter, you need to make sure what is the input voltage. That's very important. There's only two in the market, some that'll say five volts only and some that will say uh, basically three to six S LiPo or they'll say uh, 12 to 16, 24, 35 volts. And we call those battery voltage VTX is so we just say battery voltage. So there's two in the market. And it's only one wire that we have to worry about. Everything else will be basically identical, whether you're running a battery voltage video transmitter or a five volt. First of all, let's go ahead and start with the five volt. So if you had a five volt video transmitter, you wanna take the five volt power, which is usually the red wire from right there. And we're just gonna call that five volts. Now let's go ahead and cover the nine volts. Now on this flight controller, what's really nice, it does have that nine volt regulator, which will give you a high probability of having absolutely beautiful, clean video feed. And the place where you want to go ahead and grab that from would be right here. Not this one, right up here. This little pad right here. So let's try to make our way out of here. And we're just going to go do it just like that. And we're going to call this a 9 volt. So this is if you're running 9 volt, that's where you want to grab your red wire from. And just like that, you have, you're basically done with the uh, red wire. I recommend you always start with the red wire first. Uh, so 5 volts again, we'll go to this pad. If you had battery voltage, you would go give it from the 9 volt here. So now let's go ahead and jump to the next step. So the next step is going to be ground. Both of them can be basically identical. So we can grab ground from here, which is usually the black wire. Here, we're just going to make it into white. Next one over, we are going to be covering, which is the video, the video line. So it gives us the video feed here. So we're going to have to cross over, but it's okay. There we go. So we'll call that vid. So there we go. Video. There we go. And the last one is going to be your smart audio protocol or IRC tramp protocol, depending on your video transmitter. So we're going to go ahead and set that up and that's going to be right here. And most of the video transmitters nowadays do have that. So let's just jump across. We'll just make it as nice as possible. And now that your smart audio or RC tramp protocol will be located on TX3 pad, which is basically UART3 in your beta flights ports tab. So we'll say UART3. Three. Three. There we go. And uh, you'll find it under peripherals and you could choose if you have smart audio or if you have the IRC tramp protocol. It'll tell you in the documentation of your video transmitter here. And that's really it for the video transmitter. Let's go ahead and jump into the next step. All right, guys, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be covering the receivers. We're gonna cover SBUS, IBUS, and also the TBS Crossfire. Now, this might screw some new people up a bit, and that's what we're gonna cover right now. First of all, let's start with SBUS, because th on this flight controller, it does matter where these go, or else you won't get signal and you won't be able to fly your quadcopter. So SBUS is basically from FR Sky. So let's start with the signal wire. Usually it'll tell you which one it is. It depends on the color, but it usually won't be uh, black or red. That's for the voltage. So let's go ahead and set up SBUS first. All right, so we'll call this SBUS. Now, if you had FR Sky IBUS, or sorry, if you had FlySky IBUS, your signal wire, IBUS wire, will go right here. So we're just gonna put that down. And we're just going to go like this and we're going to say I bus. Now that's good for I bus. Now, where will your TBS crossfire go? Well, it'll go in exactly the same position, kind of plus an extra wire because the TBS crossfire, let's just write that down somewhere. So we'll say TBS and we're going to have a TX pad usually. And we also have an RX pad. So there's usually two wires you need to connect other than the, the voltage. We still haven't gotten to the voltage part. So the TX wire is going to go exactly where the IBUS is going to go as well. So we can just do it like that. Boom. So there we go. And IBUS also connects in the same position. Now the R pad on or the RX pad on the TBS Crossfire is going to go into this pad right here. However, if you do it like this, this is basically RX4, which is UART4 in the Beta Flight's ports tab. So you'd have to set this up as the serial RX because by default, this pad right here is RX1 for SBUS, and that's usually going to be set up as default as SBUS. And you're gonna have to remove from the ports tab, the serial RX for UART1, 
and enable it for UART4 if you're running uh, TBS Crossfire or IBUS. Very important you do that. Now here we also have another one. Uh, this is a TX one. And this is uh, for, and this is actually an inverted pad for uh, smart port. For example, if you're using SBUS, uh, FR Sky with telemetry, uh, they have you covered right there, which again is really, really nice. Not a lot of companies do that. So this is really nice, especially if you want to run uh, smart port or you wanted to run F port, you can do that right there, which is really, really great. Now let's cover the five volts in ground. Well, it's going to be very simple. Here's five volts right there. If uh, if you're running FR Sky, then that's where you'd want to actually set that up. It just makes the overall build process so much cleaner. And by the FR Sky and the TBS Crossfire, we also have a separate five volt in ground right here. And those obviously will be, this will be the five volt right here. So boom, boom, right, always five volt. And the other one is going to be the ground, which is this one right here. And we're gonna call it ground. So it, should, it just makes your life so much easier. If you have IBUS or TBS Crossfire, just stick it, stick it right there. And if you had uh, FR Sky SBUS, then you would stick it right here. And that's basically everything covered here. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. Also, come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways there and you get access to all kinds of crazy stuff like my secret shop. Also, um, my open hardware schematic for flight control. So you can design your own, sell it, don't matter. Um, it's open for you guys and uh, you get exclusivity to whatever project I'm currently working on. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.